Well, welcome everyone to the world's only official podcast. Today we're one man short on host Jackson. He didn't, he decided it wasn't important enough to be here. He heard Andrew Tate, famous kickboxing world champion, was coming on. He wanted no part of that action. So he's taking the day off, at least for a little while. Pissed himself a little bit, cowering in the corner, <laughs> genuinely afraid of this human. <laughs> well, it's the first time someone's been afraid of me over the internet usually over the internet they're 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 much braver usually it's like <laughs> i'm gonna whoop your ass when i see you oh trust me <laughs> jack jackson knows his limits he doesn't bite off more than he can chew that's a that's a good lead into our very first question mr tate has anyone from the internet actually tried to whoop your ass <laughs> well <laughs> yeah um i've had some threats you know and like there's an address of mine that must be on the internet somewhere, and it's about six years out of date. But at least five times a day, I get a message saying, "Here's your address. You better watch out. There's no, there's no rules on the street. There's no ref when I bring my gun." <laughs> I'm just like, well, I feel sorry for whoever still lives there. I mean, you know, but I'm obviously it's an innocent old lady getting her ass kicked every day because of you. Re- repeatedly. <laughs> This old lady's getting her ass kicked repeatedly. They're screaming, fuck you, Andrew. And she's like, I don't know who he is. That's a big Lebowski situation and a half right there. Good God. God damn. Yeah, it's crazy. It really is crazy. And and the, and the number one, like, the number one guys or threat that they use is, I don't know they, I don't know where they get this thing is. Without a referee, you can't fight. Like, they get this thing about, there's no ref, so be afraid. I'm just like, you're about 12. Uh, Oh, this trained fighter cannot fight outside of the ring. It's like magic. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> it's crazy. He gets robbed of all of his superpowers. You, you know, Steven, I might no, just be... Go ahead. When there's no referee, yeah, I forget how to throw a punch for some reason, so... Yeah. It works. <laughs> you know, Steven, I might just be a, a box boy at the Costco with no fighting experience, but if there was no ref, I bet you I could whoop his ass. <laughs> that's, literally, that's literally how they think. And then they start threatening with like machine guns and shit. Like, oh, uh, what, did the, what, what did the last one say? One said there's no referee. And one said there's no rules when I, when I bring my Tech 9 or something. I'm just like, Ooh. <laughs> I mean, technically there is. There's still the law. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't just, you don't just get to shoot people because you're outside the ring. <laughs> no, Kaya, there's no ref. Oh, anytime someone's persecuted, some rules still apply, you know. Yeah, you would think so. Yeah. yeah. Haven't you ever seen the American judicial system, Kaya? There's always a judge, a jury, and then a referee to make sure things go cleanly. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It really is crazy. And I provoke these kind of people on Twitter daily. Like, my, my Twitter inbox has got to be one of the most entertaining. I, but because... I saw. Go on. No, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go on. Oh, I was just going to say, because sometimes I screenshot some of the inboxes, I made a mistake of screenshotting an inbox and tweeting it, so then everyone thought, shit, he reads his inboxes, and it just fucking went nuts. <laughs> so I'll get thousands, thousands an hour. And, like, you get the clever ones, like, because I screenshot the ones I agree with, so you get the guy who's like, hey, Andrew, I just want to know you read this, I just want to say something, your page is really inspirational, and then you click accept, and they're like, you're a fucking dickhead, and just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, the old Trojan horse. <laughs> the oldest trick in the book. <laughs> That's beautiful. Well, I mean, Andrew, the way I found about you and decided to have you on was I was, you know, going through Twitter and I follow up a whole lot of terrible people on Twitter, like actual Nazis, social justice warriors, the whole lot. And somebody shared a tweet that was a screenshot of what appeared to be you mocking a man asking for money for a sick child. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, that, that, that tweet no, no, is that, hang yeah. on, this, I'm, No, 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 I'm not attacking you here. I'm just saying that I saw that and I thought, well, what a dick. But then I paid attention to the sites. You, you always got to check the sources and shit, right? And it's, and it, I noticed it's only getting shared on all of these like super lefty Twitter accounts and all that. So, you know, looked into you, saw it, it was out of context. So you you yeah. want to uh, tell us about that one? Yeah, absolutely. It was a long Twitter spat with this this really aggressive, strange individual. So, and then what happened was, coincidentally, I got blocked. And when I got blocked and couldn't defend myself, they took certain a few of the tweets and put them together to make it look like I'd randomly, unprovoked attacked this guy. But what happened is, some guy, some leftist guy, got upset by my Twitter and attacked my Twitter and attacked me personally for about a good hour. I was ignoring him for about a good hour. 
You think that money makes you someone. You think, why do you spend money on cars when you should give all of your earnings you've ever made to charity? It's just the kind of dumb shit people tweet at you. Like, because you're more remotely successful, you should never buy anything for yourself ever. So they're just tweeting at me all this bollocks. And then he said something like, uh, if I had your kind of money, my son wouldn't be in trouble. And then I replied, well, what's wrong with your son? Like, I just, my first reply to him, so what's wrong with your son? And then he said, uh, I'm trying to raise money through GoFundMe to get someone literate to read it for you. So it was even insulting in the way he sent that. And then someone else replied to that instantly. You haven't had a job for three years. You just spend the GoFund money on, on not working or something. So everyone started attacking him. I don't know who he was. And then I said, is that why you're so upset? Because the money you need to save your son is about less than a fifth of what I spent on one of my cars. That's what I said. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then when I got banned, they will start saying, he provoked this guy. That I got hit with Twitter jail three times in a row simultaneously. Every time I'd click continue to Twitter, I, a new sentence would start. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. so that was that. But fuck that guy. I don't care about him. Whatever. It's Twitter. Twitter's a shitstorm, isn't it? you got to just get involved. you got to jump in and everyone's going to say bad things and you just have to ride the wave. And that's how it goes. I, I turned from sort of an old grumpy grandpa on Twitter to an old grandma. I used to, like I said, I follow all of these insane people. And I it, my timeline would be asshole, asshole, insane person, insane person, asshole, stupid person. I just get angry and tweet something and then I'd calm down and delete it and, because I don't want to really get involved on Twitter. I do what I do. Just follow a bunch of baby animal Twitters, man. It just it mellows you out so much. <laughs> It's true. I, well, that, that's a good point. I mean, to be honest with you, I enjoy Twitter for exactly what I'm doing it for, and that's just pissing everyone off. I think it's hilarious. You, you have fuck you money. We don't. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't, don't, don't say that, Kai. The amount of times I've seen people telling you about how much money you're making and how much you go to charity is astonishing. Kai is rolling in the fat stacks. That's all, that's, that's all they say. And, you know, I'm really, really, in the grand scheme of the world, 0% rich. I mean, there's people who are genuinely rich. And this, but it doesn't matter. You can buy anything. You buy a new sweater. Oh, Tate's showing off again. He doesn't give a fuck about the disabled penguins. It's like, fuck you. Who are these? Like, how much? It's really, it really is crazy. But uh, even, even, even when I don't speak financially, even if I just speak about anything, I make sure the tone is as abrasive as possible to watch everyone have literal meltdowns. You know? Oh, it's great. And it's been working. You got the attention of J.K. Rowling in a recent feud match there, I saw. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, J.K. Rowling's desperate for me, I'm sure of it. Oh yeah, she's she's coming. <laughs> yeah, she wants them. You know, there's there's no reason for a woman to. In my experience of life, hate and love are pretty closely linked. Like the girl who always goes, "I fucking hate you. I can't stand you." Da-da-da. She's always the one who fucks you when she's drunk. Yeah. J.K. Rowling. Yeah. J.K. Rowling, if you're drunk and listening, <laughs> we're available. Please. Let us know. Yeah, she she'd love to be in the middle of this podcast. <laughs> oh, she she <laughs> should fit right in. <laughs> God, that dumb bitch. Like, she's one of those people that, <laughs> as you say, she's actually rich, right? She's loaded. Yeah. And I don't get how you can be angry at anything when you're that rich. This is something Charlie and I talk about so often. How how can you be at all angry at anything on the planet when you're that filthy rich? And like, it's not even angry. She does a sit on Twitter and she just, she spouts garbage. You know what? And it's not even angry. It's like, when I said that depression wasn't real. And the whole world went fucking nuts. I don't know if you saw that. I, I ended up in mainstream news and every celebrity under the sun, all the Games of Thrones characters, everyone was calling me a cunt. But really? when I said, yeah, oh yeah. You knew you were <laughs> bad when fucking Lannis Ty Lannister is calling you out. Like, what the fuck did they have to do with it? Google Andrew Tate depression and you'll see it like in the Huffington Post and stuff. Like it went massive when I said depression wasn't real. Um, so JK Rowling jumped in and I was like, how the fuck are you depressed? You've won the, not only if you, like winning the lottery takes some luck. But to become a billionaire with a shit story about a dude, like a wizard, like it's like zero originality. There's a little boy who knows magic. Like what the fuck? Is that your official? Uh, is that your official review of the Harry Potter franchise? A shit story about a dude. Yeah, a dude who knows magic. A dude who knows magic. I don't need to read them to know their shit. And <laughs> and if you manage to become a billionaire off the back of this garbage, and you want to sit and talk about, well, I was depressed. Depressed about what? You stupid. You know, you have no in, you have no concept of the real world. Go get a job. Fuck you. Yeah, I mean, speak, speaking of that, like I agree. Her books are very uninspired. Nothing like The Man Who Forgot How to Poop by Genghis Swan. That's a literary masterpiece. Charlie, that's, we that's said no you... ads this week. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mister Tate, since since we've already started talking about the the man who forgot how to poop, I'd recommend it if you're looking for a, a real page turner. 
Thank you. Uh, to be honest with you, and I haven't read a book since I was in a jail cell. That's the last time I read a book. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. But I ain't got time for that. Was it the world famous bestseller, The Shit Guy Who Knows Magic? They had me in a cell for about 12 hours while they raided my house. And I Jesus. got stuck. They gave me a choice wow. of three Jesus. books. Christ, what said, did you do? Oh, God, this is a long ass story, man. Yeah, I don't give a shit about the book anymore. This is, <laughs> yeah. this is made for telling stories. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I didn't do anything. So I'll, I'll leave out certain details, but there was a. a I had disgruntled... sounds like you didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know what? Moving on. You're fine. <laughs> disgruntled human who told a lie about me to the, the police. And then it was five o'clock in the morning. I've just been out in London. And I had this girl back in my apartment, da, 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 and she, we were talking about. She goes, "Oh, my boyfriend." We just can't do something about her boyfriend. I don't give a shit. I was like, "Whatever." And then on the door, we heard, doo, 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 doo. and she was like, "Fuck, it's my boyfriend." I was like, "How the fuck does your boyfriend know where I live?" She goes, "It's him. It's him." I said, "It better not be him. He's like his ass whooped. He's knocking my door too hard." <laughs> <laughs> well, I went to open the door, and the police had sent like the the crazy man squad. So when I opened the door, they had like full riot gear on, tasers <laughs> pulled. Wow. Because like, like, I'm a kickboxer and they had like a picture of me with my title belts. And they're like, kill the ground, all this shit. Grabbed me up, like six of them. Arrested oh, they me. Fucking <laughs> sent the suicide squad on you. Was it the, yeah. Was yeah, it the you JK got, Rowling squad? You're not even on the internet and you got swatted. I That's know. <laughs> this, is pro- this is before my Twitter days. This is about three years ago. So yeah, they, they dragged me. They dragged me down the step. On the way out, I was like, well, I don't want to leave this girl in my house. I barely know her. And they're like, what? what's she doing in your house if you barely know her? I'm like, you know what she's doing in my house if I barely know her. Why are you asking stupid fucking questions? Get her out of my apartment. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they kicked her out, and then they said, oh, they had some warrant to search me in my house. And to prevent me from uh, hiding anything, they had to put me in a cell during the search process. So that's how I ended up in the cell. And they, they went through my entire house and just fucked my whole house up. Like, it wasn't what, like a what, nice... What was their actual reasoning like why were they there that day oh something to do with money laundering and fraud or some bullshit something i I literally had nothing to do with it what happened because i I, I never even went to court my lawyer said i must have got in a car with someone who was under surveillance at some point and they thought that was something to do with something i wasn't so i Mm. I know some dodgy dude i must have jumped in his car even i did to this day don't know i can guess but i don't know for sure who it was so just wrong place wrong time yeah he, he was under police surveillance at the time and they thought oh this kickboxer he's he's an arrogant fuck he must have something to do with this so um (laughs) let's raid his house so um yeah and when they searched my house it wasn't even a nice search like when i came back i had an unpaid electricity bill for example Mm. and they 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 pinned the unpaid bill to the door like why like (laughs) yeah ah (laughs) take that what what a fuck you yeah Yeah, yeah really so they've done some really weird shit like that, you know. So anyway, think, but while I was in the cell, I had a choice of three books. And I chose this one book. I can't remember what it was called. And it was about some negotiator for the UN, some woman, some empowered woman who's a nego- the best negotiator ever <laughs> who worked for the UN. And then, and then it kept talking about this mistake, but she quit because she made a mistake. But they needed her back because there was a big problem going on and she was the best, but she couldn't get over the mistake she made. And I was reading this book thinking, what the fuck? What mistake is this? What mistake is this? It turns out the mistake she made was during her last negotiation between two warring tribes, she she fucked one of the leaders of the other tribe. She took a bunch <laughs> of dick from some guy. From- some of those translators are weird, though. I mean, somehow fuck ups happen. You guys all remember that one who basically was, was just dancing instead of doing sign language. Oh, remember my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> What was that during, though? Uh, it was during something super uh, important. I think it was like... UN and, oh, meetings. No, 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 no. big time meeting. It was it? The, it, I think it was the Boston bombing, and they had this sign language interpreter who just started doing some type of like OA-style interpretive dance for sign language. <laughs> I think up. that's what the occasion was. Well, it's, uh, there was something I wanted to bring up for <laughs> the McGregor versus Mayweather fight. I wanted to get like your perspective on that. Since you're in the business, what, what did you think of that? Just a big waste of time big money grabber was it something you were paying close attention to yeah may should have completely schooled him but i don't i heard a lot of rumors that may didn't train and he didn't spar and may's old and he's out of practice and may mayweather beat him the same way a, a pro no not even a pro beats an amateur may beat him the same way a very lazy tired can't be bothered <laughs> pro beats an amateur you know he just shelled up kept walking at him Knew he gas and then threw about four right hands. <laughs> like it was a very lazy performance for Mayweather. Mayweather could have easily made that 
much more compelling from his perspective. But he always knew he was going to win the later rounds. That was always his intention. I always, I always knew May was going to win. But after the first three or four rounds, even I was like, fuck, no way. But then, you know, the truth so came about. Even in like, even within the, the fighting business, people were still excited to see that fight. Because from my understanding, a lot of fighters didn't really give too much of a shit. Everyone really knew the outcome, fighter or not. But a lot of people just kind of expected it to be no one's going to really try hard. They're both making a lot of money. I'm not even going to bother watching this. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I think I, I, in fighting, anything can happen. I was still interested to watch it. But I think a lot of the resentment within the fighting community, and people won't, won't admit this, but the truth is there's a whole lot of fighters, me included, who never get a half a million dollar payday, let mm-hmm. alone a $100 million payday. Like, Polly Malinaji is upset. Not because Connor's mean or whatever. Paulie Malinaji's upset because he dedicated his life to boxing and he still has no money. That's that's what the resentment mm-hmm. comes from a lot of fighters fighting is a really weird sport where how good you are actually has very little to do with how much you get paid yeah you yeah, have definitely. to win fights you have to win fights but there's also a whole bunch of other shit that goes with it and especially in boxing sometimes if you're undefeated and you're not very well known you're very low value because no one wants to put their their superstar against this dude no one's heard of who whoops mm-hmm. everyone's ass so sometimes the better you are the worse things are for you there's a whole bunch. I'm telling you now. There's some. There's some Russians out there today who none of us have heard of who would kick the fuck out of Canelo. But no. Why would anyone? Why would he take that fight? You know. Yeah, it wouldn't be worth it for him. It wouldn't be worth it for him. He lost to this who? Or this fucking farmer from Kazakhstan or whatever. So <laughs> you have to really build your name up. You have to really, you know, like like Triple G did. He's just built his name up now, but he's 35. So it's a really long, hard road. And lots of fighters are just resentful to the instant payday. Conor McGregor has destroyed the fight game. I don't even like him. I think he's a dick. But he's he's come along and he's taken all the fucking cash. He really has. He's milked you. it. He's, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but he's milked it. He's completely milked the game dry. And that's and that's why a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not interested. Da, da, da. But really what they're saying is Conor made more in this fight than I would make in 100 careers. And that's all it is. Yes, yeah, I can yeah. definitely see that. I mean, if I was a fighter who's just training his whole life and dedicated himself to it, and then, you know, the, the title fight of a hundred million dollars goes to this gimmick fighter yep. who's just there because he's a good asshole, like he's a good actor yep. on screen. Yep, yep, definitely. Yeah, exactly. And and to be honest with you, I mean, Connor did well with the Aldo fight. I mean, that was obviously a great punch. But if he would have lost that fight, he'd be nowhere right now. Like literally, you know, he built himself up so much. If he would have lost that fight, it would be the end of him. So he did well. He knocked Aldo out, whatever, whatever. But I, I hear rumors that he doesn't. I said this before the fight. I was sitting with my friends, and I said, this is the end of Connor. And they said, why? I said, because he's got going to get too big for his boots. May's going to school him. And then one of two things is going to happen. Either he's going to go back to the UFC. Fighting's a weird thing, and there's like a aura of invincibility kind of around you. I mean, fair enough, he lost to Nate, but then he revenged it. Da, da, da. But I have a feeling, and I said it here first, he's going to lose his next two or three fights. I have a feeling that's going to happen. And he ain't going to be able to deal with that mentally very well. Because the problem is with people like him, his biggest strength is his ego and his biggest enemy is his ego. So he's like a male Ronda Rousey. When she lost her fight, she just dropped <laughs> off. Yeah, <laughs> just fucking crumpled. Oh, it's the same with lots of fighters because I'm the same. I've, I lost a fight. And I, for me, for the next three or four fights, although I won them, I was fucking nervous. Like it was a real big issue for me. Whereas other people don't give a shit. Well, I was like, yeah, because you don't have, you know, your biggest strength is your ego in some ways. And in all, also ways it can be your enemy. And, and Connor has this thing, like even after the fight, he keeps saying, Oh, I kept gassing. I kept gassing. And he gasses all the time. And, you know, he thinks it's a mental thing when it's not, he just needs to stop training like a faggot and start running properly. And, <laughs> and, and, and this is going to be in his head I'm telling you before you go in that ring, you're not talking about, you're not thinking about how hard you punch. You're thinking about all the times you fucked up. That's normal. It's human. He's like, oh, I might get tired. I might get tired. The more you think I might get tired, the more tired you're going to get. And everyone knows to put pressure on him now. So I think he's going to lose his next two or three fights. And he, what's even worse is because he got $100 million for boxing, why are you going to go back to the UFC for a mil or two mil? And all of a sudden, you're not interested. So now he's talking about fighting Canelo, and he's going to get his fucking head smashed. I hadn't even heard of him. Do you think he would be that floored because he lost, though? Because I feel like he already expected to lose. He just did it for the money. I mean, he must have known he was going to lose. So he could not have hit him that hard to have lost. No, I I really believe he thought he was going to win. Really? Yeah, really. I really believe he he was bigger. He's a lot younger. May would have been retired, blah, blah, blah. And although logically you should think you're going to lose, 
his his people around him, his yes men around him, his team around him would have done nothing but convince him he can win. And when you train and you've been told you're going to win for 12 weeks, you believe it, you know, and then you get in there and you get reality check. But he's talking about fighting Canelo now. And if that happens, that's the end of Connor because he's going to get smashed within two rounds. And then he's going to get, no, he's not, May is, a, you know, May is a very old, very particular type of fighter. Canelo is just going to walk him down and beat him up badly. So he needs to not take that fight. If you're listening, McGregor, don't take that fight. We, we <laughs> urge you not to take that fight. <laughs> Expert advice. I dare you to take it and lose. <laughs> <laughs> I dare you to take it and win. <laughs> so, uh, so Andrew, one one thing that I really want to know is, uh, out of all the all the all the hard hitting contact sports like boxing, MMA, all of those, why did you decide to go along with kickboxing? Well, that's a good question, and part of me knows I would have made a lot more money if I did some of the others. I made I made good money with kickboxing, but if I would have stuck with MMA, I did fight MMA four, four times, but I kept breaking my hand in the mm-hmm. smaller gloves, so I had hand problems. So then I kind of stuck with kickboxing in K1. And when, when I was doing kickboxing, it was still kind of the glory days of, of K1 and stuff. I don't know if you remember. In Japan, they had the Superdome and all that kind of thing. So it was still quite big. It was still existed, you know. Now it's di- dropped off a little bit. But I don't know. I, I, I was good at it. I was getting respectable paydays. And uh, it is what it is. I, I could have probably gone with MMA. <laughs> but by the time I was considering MMA, I was 26, 27. And that's not old, but then also, I just thought, ah, fuck it, I'm done now. That's enough, you know. Like I, I fought from the age of 19 till about 28, 29 regularly, um, and 10 years was enough for me. Everyone's different, and for me, it was enough. I don't, I don't financially, I didn't need to fight anymore, so I just thought, ah, I'll just have three sins drink poker. That's enough. <laughs> <Did you>? Literally, <laughs> literally, people keep people people keep looking for like some deep reason, and there was no deep reason. Literally, one day I woke up, and. My brother said, let's go running. And I said, I don't want to go running. And that was, that was it. Like, literally, it was just like, I've done it. I proved my point and enough is enough. I, like, I respect that. Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, not some big revelation or anything. Just, yeah, I, don't want, I don't want to run today, bro. Not, not today. And not tomorrow either. You turned a temper tantrum into a life choice. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, like, at, at 22, 23, you know, you know, you've got this whole career ahead of you. At 30, okay, yeah, you could fight to your 40 if you really want to, but... You're not as good as you were. Things hurt more. It's harder. And on top of that, your priorities change. Like there's other things you want to do with your youth. Fighting fighting conquers your life, man. It's all you do. You can't drink. You can't do anything. All you do is train. All you think about mentally, all you think about is the next fight. You can't enjoy life outside of fighting. All you do is fight, 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 fight. And it's fair enough if you have a financial motivator. If you're making millions of fight, then yeah, of course you're going to do it. But if you're not, you know, I, I'd, I'd make between 30 and 40 K a fight, which sounds like a lot of money, but by the time you train for eight weeks and then you have to give your coach 20% and by the time you break it all down and then hours spent in the gym, plus risking your life on top of it. Cause that's what you're genuinely doing. It's like, do I need to do that anymore? Not really. So, uh, there it is. Didn't do it anymore. So do you find yourself kind of enjoying life more now that you've kind of stopped fighting or do you find yourself missing, missing the thrill of it and kind of being in the ring? Yeah, it's, it's the grass is always greener. When I'm not training, I'm not fighting, I keep saying to my brother, maybe I should come back and whoop some ass. And he goes, as soon as you start training for that fight, you're going to be like, fuck this. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's one of them things, you know, like mm. it's, it's just how life works out. You're never happy, whichever way you really choose. But I, I've got the belts, you know, I've, I can say I've been there. I've done it. I, I was thinking about having a run at MMA, but like I'm, I'm really good friends with some high level UFC guys. I'm good friends with like Jimmy Manoa and, and, and uh, Linda Vassell, who's in Bellator and some guys who are like at the top, top. And it's really it's by the time you, you think you get big paydays and stuff but the, by the effort and shit you dedicate to it it really is a life conquering thing i think and I, there's also a, a pattern i've i've noticed in nearly every fighter that i don't have every successful high level fighter has the same lifestyle regarding women they're all married and they've got their one chick connor fucking john jones they've all got one chick and they've got the kids and that's what they do and they just they escape the house and they dedicate to the gym and they come home and they barely see their wife and they go to sleep that's fine, but I like having ten girlfriends, and that takes a whole bunch of my time. <laughs> and it's hard to, it's, and it's hard to have a whole ton of pretty women around you and still train for fights. You can't do it. That's what I was telling Andrew. Uh, well, the other Andrew. Here. <laughs> no, that's yeah, that's what you told him earlier. Anyway, <laughs> that's exactly. So that's my yeah. excuse. I mean, if I were to get one girl and just stay there, but I don't want to do that. I want to use my. I travel the world. I live in Eastern Europe, and some of the most beautiful women in the world. And me and my brother just run around in Lambos, partying and shit. You know, I don't want to fucking go to the gym. It's boring now. 
God, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> this is this is very respectable. Yeah, uh, nothing but respect for that. You hear that, Andrew? You see? Yeah, Andrew, are you listening? I need you need like a code, man. A two, yeah. because now it gets confusing. You can call me Tate and call him Andrew. Uh, that works. Uh, that works. Pl- please call me Tate. <laughs> but um. I, I still keep the skill sharp in case that 12 year old from Twitter turns up, you know, yeah. <laughs> and he's ready to throw down. <laughs> yeah. He had to whoop my ass for being no, you call me sexist. Just, or something. Well, you know what? Tell that, me right? that. <clears throat> what? You just got to hire a ref to follow you around everywhere you go. Oh, no one's going to mess with you. Then. <laughs> yeah. Then you'll be like, Oh no, can't no, you know, refs right here. You know, r- rules are to be followed. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, sometimes yeah. when I'm next in London, I'm going to like tweet my exact location and say, I'm waiting here for two hours. <laughs> Let's see who turns up. Say, here it is, the GPS coordinate. I'm here with my brother. And see, see who comes. Tate, I, I saw your tweets. Where tell us about that one with the 10k retweets, and you'll go to a feminist rally. <laughs> yeah, I completely didn't expect that to actually like kick off like it did. So it now did. You're, it. It's your now word. I've got now I've got to do it. Now I've got to do yeah. it. But I'm thinking of being a little bit more subtle. I'm thinking like. I don't know, like, if I have a sign saying, you know, men are better than women, I think... Uh, tell, I, tell the people what, what it was about real quick. Okay, so I said that if I if I get 10K retweets, I'll go to a feminist rally wearing a MAGA t-shirt, like, make America great again, and um, a sign saying, men are stronger than women, if you don't believe me, let's fight. Um, <laughs> which, is, which is true, but I'm thinking, surely feminists know when they're being baited. I mean, I know they're morons, but surely they know when they're being baited. I think maybe I need to be more subtle, like, maybe I need, like three or four like super hot short skirt high heel women just like walking behind me and a t-shirt well, always do king of all females or something for the idea of context <laughs> i just want to relate to the audience that that tweet currently is sitting on twelve thousand retweets right now well, people want to see it oh, oh yeah. yeah yeah well people do want to see it yeah i kind of want to see it but i don't know <laughs> I, I, think, I don't i don't know if they're going to be i don't know surely are feminists going to bite that they will bite won't they they're fucking oh of course of course. They'll get in your face and yell and maybe pepper spray you, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, could what if like when you do send out your GPS coordinates, you get like the pepper spray crowd. Could you handle the pepper spray? Well, you know, yeah, I don't know. Could I handle the pepper? I'll, I'll make sure I'm with my brother. I, I think even swinging blind, I'll, I'll, I'll take him out of the game. But, That's um, like Cuphead. <laughs> That's actually one of my concerns, that, you know, because the problem is it's all going to be filmed. And once those feminists touch me, I don't, I don't really know the law. It depends what country I do it in. But as far as I'm concerned, I don't really also have a true. distinction. I don't have a big distinction between sexes, and the feminists should agree with me that men are not better than women. Therefore, if you push me or touch me, I'm not going to fuck out. So, <laughs> so, so when you're signing autographs, if someone goes in for a hug, you just whap them right in the face, <laughs> right uppercut, left hook. Well, um, <laughs> the old combo. <laughs> if these feminists get too militant. It's going to be one hell of a viral video. <laughs> Kickboxing world champion versus 100 angry females. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to that Huffington Post article. Yeah. <laughs> Toxic Nazi beats up women. I'm the bad guy. Well, Sports Center, the the headline would just be Tate uh, newly undefeated. <laughs> Tate defends his championship <laughs> belt. <laughs> Takes on multiple but, opponents. Tate, you can you could confuse them if you just take a knee and like raise your fist. So Andrew, before we before we completely tell, shy away from the kickboxing and whole idea on that. Um, are there any, th- this is one thing that I've always wanted to know and ask someone in the business, are there any secret kind of techniques or mind games or tactics that people employ? Cause I've, I've read, and this could be complete <laughs> bullshit, but I've read that a lot of guys in MMA before fights don't shower or wash their trunks. <laughs> so they smell like utter what? shit. Yeah. So they smell like utter <laughs> shit and they throw their <laughs> opponent off. I'm dead serious. Are you sure this wasn't just fan fiction? No, it was real. They just don't shower, and it throws them off, and they get an advantage. Yeah, there's lots of people with loads of little things like that, like little hints and tips, or people grow a beard thinking it, you know, to flex the shot and all this kind of shit. I think partially some of them can work, but if you get hit in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, I figured I wanted to ask someone who would actually have experience with this shit how far it actually goes. You know, you know, know the I mean? problem is, though, the problem is, and the reason, like, Connor's done well is because he can speak well, but the problem is, 99% of fighters are fucking stupid. And this is coming from a fighter himself. Like, 99% of fighters are brain dead. And, because I, I don't think it's a normal thing to do. Like, what normal, content, happy human goes, you know what, I'm going to go fucking get the shit kicked out of me. Like, it's just, you know, because even if you win all your fights in training, you still get the shit kicked out of you. 
it's not a normal path and a lot of people who pursue it are just brain dead so a lot of you know there's probably some brain dead retard out there i don't wash my shorts it's like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and he also happens to be the best yeah it catches on because i've heard that three or four times before so it does catch on but oh, Jesus, you know, it, it's an actual yeah, thing. I don't know oh. if a dude didn't wash his shorts, I'd still just kick his ass. Like, to me. But <laughs> I kick it his does. ass extra hard. <laughs> he smells bad. Get him away. It is a thing. It is a thing. There's loads of things like that. I've heard. Right. Of so, do you have any personal ones? Like, do you have any mantras or warm up shit or anything that you specifically do that you think helps you? Not really. <laughs> really, really genuinely, no. Besides fucking with people on Twitter before a fight. <laughs> I do that before and after. I only took to Twitter after Trump won because everyone started having fucking mental breakdowns. Otherwise, before that, oh. I didn't tweet. But Trump, oh, tw- just, made, Trump t- t- just made Twitter so much better. My, I, I know you, with the whole depression is a real thing and all, but still, if you ever find yourself in a bad mood for whatever reason, go on Twitter, go to anybody's timeline that's to the left and filter their timeline by... November 8th to November 10th, 2016, <laughs> and just watch them slowly melt down over the yeah. course of a couple of tweets. It's the best thing. Just get a little buzz, get a drink, just have your woman on your lap and filter the timeline. Woman, I mean, I, oh, singular? I, what, what the fuck? We're talking I, to Mr. I, Tate. That's plural right there, mister. But I, I mean, well, I, no, I, I can't. I'd take it an even, Surround yourself. I'd take it an even step out. i just go to fucking Donald Trump's Twitter. And and you, when you read his stuff, you just got to remember in context: this is the fucking president of the United States. Trump is some, a fucking G. I mean, some of the stuff that he posts on there—it's it's, <laughs> whether or not you believe in it or agree with it, whatever—it's just it's baffling to me to think this is one of the most powerful people in the entire <clears throat> world, and he's posting animated gifs he's of him fun. fucking wrestling <laughs> and he's and fun. golfing. It's amazing. I know not everybody is into like politics and all, and I completely get that, but if. 2016 was the year to get into politics if you ever wanted to. It's like Game of Thrones on steroids. <laughs> it was the best year. It was so entertaining. It's kind of winding down now. I don't think he still has the same kind of stage presence. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't like this season of Trump. I prefer <laughs> he was still running for President Trump, but it's still entertaining. Yeah, but the next election is going to be fucking awesome, man. Everyone's going to oh. be like, oh, we can't. And, and I hope he wins again. The next election is going to be like a WWE event. They're going to yeah. be coming out with theme music and pyrotechnics. Oh, my yeah, God. God. I'm, I'm still, still waiting, waiting for that day. I'm going to tombstone Donald Trump in the Thunderdome this November. By God, as God is my witness, he is elected by the courts. <laughs> <laughs> Trump is Trump really is a hero of mine. I, I really like I met Donald Trump, Donald Trump Jr. in Trump Tower. Uh, how did it go? Yeah. Yeah, he's a really, really genuinely nice guy. Like, genuinely, completely down-to-earth, normal dude. Like, even after the meeting, I was like, okay, so I'm, I haven't been in Manhattan in a while. Like, where's, where's the best club or restaurant? He's like, I don't know, really. I just work and see my family. Like, he's just a normal guy. He's not, he's not Flash or nothing. I was like, if I had your much money, do you know how many fucking Flash photos I'd be constantly tweeting at the liberals? Just to, like, <laughs> me and my jets. <laughs> <laughs> my dad rules this land. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, 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 he's completely cool but I'd be a complete dick if I was oh my god but yeah he, he's cool but I like Trump at, I like he doesn't take shit I like that everyone hates him he doesn't care I think that's, I, he reminds me of me Tate I'm gonna be honest I think at that point you'd be bored of it actually because you don't have to put any effort into it anymore if you don't have to put any effort into like making people angry it's then what's the game you yeah. know I, I mean all Donald Trump has to do at this point is like what was it? Eat two scoops of ice cream and like <laughs> eat ketchup with a steak and people lose their fucking minds like it's a yeah. new holocaust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wouldn't be true. fun for you, would it? There's no challenge. You can just I don't, to a degree, no, but I mean, I don't know. I think Trump, there's a line in the Batman movie, one of the first ones. It says something like, <laughs> it says something I'm like, I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the hero that no one wants or I'm the hero they need. Not the- uh, Tate, do you need assistance on this one? Yeah. <laughs> so, our it's, resident it's, comic it's book the nerd. hero, Go ahead. the hero that Gotham deserves, but not the one it needs right now. Yeah. Okay. So, I think that. Okay, maybe that doesn't apply as well. <laughs> <laughs> but Trump, Trump is the man who's not afraid to be hated to make the right decisions. I think that's a good quality. You know, he'll be like the transgenders in the military thing. He knew everyone was going to lose their shit, but also <coughs> knew it was the right decision. In your, in your defense, Tate, the rest of that quote goes, we hunt him because we know he can take it. We hate him because we know we must or something to that extent. Yeah. So it does almost fit. It's, I get what you're saying with it. We, we yeah. get, yeah. 
The, the gist yeah. came across. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. So, <laughs> not my most eloquent point, but Did I got there in the end. You might be, We I think we talked about this on the podcast or maybe offhand, but you might be interested in this idea where I, I've heard of it, where Donald Trump's just trying to make the most explosive first year or two years that he can and then bail out, like, you know, resign <laughs> as president after just compl- making complete shit storms. I don't think about mm, that. Would he? I don't know. I think, I really think his approach, and I know I'm not, I'm not just, when I say this to people, they think I'm just trolling. I genuinely think he's a good president. Okay, yeah, he tweets some shit. <laughs> but, but, you know, to actually genuinely put America first for once. And when he does that, everyone loses their mind. But every other country puts themselves first. Like, every other country does it except America. And now he's come along saying, no, if this trade deal doesn't benefit America the same as it benefits Nicaragua or wherever, we're not going to sign it. And everyone's like, oh, well, well, we have to help the Nicaraguans. He's like, well, fuck them. No, this is America. And I, I, <laughs> I I'm, fucked our I'm waiting for the Donald Trump tweet that says, fuck Nicaragua. <laughs> I'm waiting for all the comments on this podcast. Now I'm going to be so mad at us. Yeah. A bunch of well, them. <laughs> you for bringing me on. Well, I, I like Trump. I'm a huge Trump fan. I think he's doing a great job. And if that upsets you liberals, feel free to tweet at me. And we'll, <laughs> we'll arrange a meeting. <laughs> Or turn up to that old address and kill that lady. Yeah, wait, wait for his tweet. He'll have two hours to get to him. Yeah. Direct all the hate you'd usually leave in our comments to Tate. He, he's rich enough to not give a shit. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can handle it. I, 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 I enjoy it pretty much. <laughs> we can choose just this weird association of like, oh, we had you on. This must mean we agree with every single thing and all that. Just, it, and I, I, I don't even don't. I don't. I, I don't agree with all of the things you said, right? But I, Jesus, like you can't even fucking talk or may, uh, yeah, have a bad this, 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 so, yeah, stuff yeah. anymore. It's this dissociation yeah. where if you have somebody on, it's it's assumed that you're in cahoots with them and you agree yeah. with every point. And then the natural reaction is, okay, well now, you know, I don't like this. So I'm going to let them know I don't like this and I'm not going to support that anymore because you had them on. And then it, they don't realize that that doesn't hurt the person they didn't like. It just yeah. hurts hurts us. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have all, all yeah. of us, we've had the four of us, you know, God rest the soul of our fourth departed member. We've had this discussion many, <laughs> many times. And it's, you know, we, we, at the, we would have the fucking leader of the KKK on if he wanted on. And it's not because we agree with people all the time or all that. We just, we want to give every side a chance. We don't discriminate. And we, you know, whatever think is, we think is good content and good learning experiences. Well, I think that was perhaps one of the worst examples you could have given for somebody we'd yeah, want to have on. I would absolutely I have him point. on. I wouldn't agree with him, but I would absolutely have him on. <laughs> yeah, but the left, the left can't process on that level. The left are emotional. They're not, they're not logical. They're emotional. So as soon as they hear something they don't like, the emotions kick in and then everyone's a Nazi. And that's why they can't. Oh, yeah, that's why. It's, that's it's why, immediately. That's why, uh, yeah, you're, you're I already right. know the comments to this one is there's going to be at least one person going, why, why did you have this Nazi on? Why give him a platform? I, just, I didn't know this was that kind of podcast. I'm, I'm half but, black anyway. So let's, let's, let's start with that. You know, like, I'm which, full Turkish. People don't give a shit. I'm still a Nazi to them. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's crazy. It's, it doesn't matter what color you are. You're a Nazi nowadays. So tear down the statues. <laughs> Edward's a Jew. He's probably a Nazi. I'm not a goddamn Jew. <laughs> You're a goddamn Jew. No, I'm not. And I'm going to ask you to stop saying that. And we can talk about it later. <laughs> well, you see him after class, Kaya. Really? <laughs> Tweet out your location. I'll be there in two hours. You're like upset I revealed this somehow. Like, don't tell them. <laughs> well, so before. Well, uh, wait, do you have a question? Because I had one on standby. I, it's not a good one, go. <laughs> uh, you, well, don't don't discourage don't so discourage mr tate <laughs> thank you for joining us and if i could now throw it to my co-host charlie he had a question oh yeah uh hi, hi mr tate i did have a question so was fighting always your go-to was that always what you wanted to strive to be because everyone has like a goal you know when i grow up i want to be he the... said many times his goal is fucking women what more do you want no but uh, like as a... it wasn't <laughs> yeah come on like you know oh, okay, kids okay. are like okay i want to be a policeman i want to be a fireman i want to test the, the dildos from bad dragon well you growing up was fighting where you wanted to be did you always have like an affinity for that type of a type of deal yeah i mean I, my dad was a professional chess player so when i was young i was in training to become a professional chess player so I was a state chess champion and I played chess for three or four hours a day. And then when 
we moved yeah. to England. We moved to England when I was 11. My dad stayed in America, so I lost my chess coach. And also the chess scene in England was pitiful compared to America. In America, it's in schools and stuff. In England, there is no chess. So um, that kind of died out. And for me, there was an affinity between the two. To me, chess and fighting are very similar. And people think, well, but it's, it's a sport where it's one-on-one. There's no team. There's no luck. If you lose, you made a mistake somewhere. Even if it's a tiny mistake, you made a mistake. You know, um, it takes hours and hours of dedication. So to me, they were very, very closely linked. And also, I think learning fighting, for me, the reason I was interested in fighting is I used to play drums, for example. And when I didn't have a drum kit, I couldn't use my talent. I couldn't play drums. And I know it sounds like a stupid thing, but if I, I learned to play drums, and then if I wasn't, I'd say to someone, I can play drums. I'd say, can you? Well, there's no drums here, so who gives a shit? <laughs> and, and and I was like, yeah, fair enough. And fighting's one of those things you learn and you, you carry it with you. You know, you always have it. You learn football, you need a net, you need a ball, you need a team, you need a jersey. Like, with fighting, it's something you, you internalize. And for that, some, for me, that was interesting to have something that I've always got with me at all times. Even if you, even if you forget the self-defense aspect, because in most cases, self-defense is bullshit. Like the idea of, of dedicating five hours a day every day to become an excellent fighter just to defend yourself is is inane and stupid because street fights are never fair it's rarely one-on-one you're probably gonna get jumped the dude might have a knife you're like no you're knife. probably gonna lose anyway you know like so what's the fucking point in going down that path that's bullshit but just to have a skill which i always had with me at all times i found i found interesting so that's that's the reason i was interested in it if that makes sense as opposed to other sports where you need all this other shit for it to even be relevant that's always what made me envious about fighters is we we had this conversation on a previous episode where we were talking about what sports would we love to be professionals in if we somehow could wave a magic wand and i said fighter because it must feel so good to know that at most of the time at any given time 99 percent of the time to know you could kill everybody in the room if you wanted to <laughs> yeah gotta be, that's gotta be a nice feeling yeah that's what i think the, the, the thing is, though, like, the more you train and the better you get, the more you realize that you also never know what... Like, the number one weapon in a fight is that you don't know what the other guy knows. And the other guy doesn't know what you know. Like, that's the, the most thing. So, a lot of the times when I'm in situations now, you, you, you actually think, well, I don't, this dude doesn't know who I am. I don't know who this dude is. Like, you, know, you don't really know who you're fucking with sometimes, you know? Never, not, that's never occurred to me. I've never been surprised with some fucking ninja or nothing. <laughs> knock on wood <laughs> yeah but they, they are out there so i think that's the reason why a lot of fighters actually avoid <laughs> they are <laughs> they are yeah they go to china but, um, but i think that's the reason why a lot of fighters actually avoid street fights and stuff is because once you know what you know and how badly you can hurt someone it, the the realm of possibility opens up that there's other people out there who can do shit but it is good it is good to know it's certainly i make mean, the, the few few times i've been in altercations it is, it is good to know, and especially when it's so pertinently obvious, like, you're going to destroy them. Like, me and my brother were in Thailand, and we went to an argument with these, like, seven Australian guys. And they were too drunk. They were a rugby team. So, of course, they're hard as fuck. And they uh, were all too drunk to barely stand. And Tristan, my brother, was literally just like, guys, I'm trying to be nice to you and telling you, pick another target because you're going to get fucking hurt. Uh, you know, Australians, the toughest guys in the world. <laughs> oh yeah we're well aware of that the, the toughest nails tristan broke when tristan broke the first guy's jaw like and all other six just started literally shitting themselves but those kind of situations are funny because you know there's zero percent chance of loss but sometimes when i'm in russia or whatever and you know there's, there's just me and there's three dudes my size and then i also know that you know sistema and all these martial arts they teach in schools and shit you still kind of think mm, this might not be as clean as i want it to be you know so it depends where you are and stuff. So it's, it, it, in, a degree, to some, in some situations you feel invincible, in others you think... Oh, in I'm our safe. case, it would, be, it would be fine to like anime conventions, Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I don't think there's any ninjas to be found The there. local <laughs> elementary school. Yeah. yeah <laughs> McDonald's getting your Sichuan sauce or whatever. I can finally beat up those middle schoolers. They deserve it. Do it. <laughs> I gotta ask this though, to any ever get any sort of threats that ever got to you like something because it's not always about you right sometimes they'll threaten your family members and shit yeah. like that You're like your mom and all that we yeah. had dick masters on last week the, the week before that and you know they, they threatened they went after his mom ever got anything like that that actually did get to you piss you off um or you yeah i mean people have tried their very very best to upset me and i am 
ultra resilient to being upset in general because I, I think for someone's opinion to bother you or someone, for someone to say something that bothers you, it means you respect their opinion. And I'm extremely good at not respecting other people. So <laughs> for, <laughs> for me, it's very easy. Like, it doesn't matter who you are. You, when J.K. Rowling or some other successful celebrity starts tweeting at me saying I'm, I'm a piece of shit, I can literally just sit there and think, I don't give a shit about you. And, and it really is easy for me from that perspective. And people have tried everything. They've tried, like, my dad died. They're trying to drag up your, your dead dad. And they, literally, they'll be like, you're an insensitive piece of shit. And then threaten to kill you and mention your dead dad in the same tweet. Like, that's Twitter. So... <laughs> People have tried everything, and I've never been upset by a tweet ever. Like, I'm the absolute conclusive proof that cyberbullying isn't real because people are My trying. Man. My man, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Thank you. So, you know, anyone who's secure in themselves doesn't doesn't give a shit. But then, thank as you. For, I as, guess. Sorry, Karen. No, 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 no. You, you. Yeah, Kai, yeah inter- Kai interrupted you. You don't have to apologize. Yeah, come on, yeah. Kai. I get it. The it's, fuck it's how together. the podcast goes. We always interrupt each other, but the guest goes first. <laughs> but yeah so i think if you're if you're going to participate in the online space you need to sign you need to you know mentally sign that contract this is going to get nasty at some point and i'm not going to give a shit if you're going to join twitter and be like no one to say anything mean to me then you need to fuck off and do something else but um as for threats i mean my mom is, is uh, I, I i've retired her she's cool now and i know where she is and she's in a secure apartment da, da, da. so i'm quite lucky that i know every no one knows no one's really sent her address to me or anything like that but I don't know. I just think the internet is a massive outlet for for individuals to to pretend to be what they've always wanted to be, you know. And like sometimes when I got an, I've got an argument with I don't know if you know him. His name's Mike Stutchbury or something. He's a real f- fat piece of shit leftist. And I've never uh, heard of him. He's a loser. But it, it, the the thing <laughs> is like, and I said this to him. I said if you could build yourself from the ground up like a Sims character, like at a click of a button, no one would choose obese has panic attacks, <laughs> depressed leftist. Like, who would tick those boxes? Like, everyone would tick, you know, tall, strong. Da- no one would tick your credentials, friend. So, the reason it's they It's one like, of the best insults I've ever heard. It's true. You know, so no one would make you in Sims. No write one would one make down. you in Sims. Unless, unless they were trying to make that character that you, like, box in the room and set on fire. <laughs> the dude that you mock at the expense of his... <laughs> so when he's like oh you think you're so important because you you can fight it's like no i think that you wish you were closer to me than you are to yourself and this is why you're on the internet being as brave as possible i think i think the internet is a massive outlet for people who are unhappy in their current situations and they want to pretend they're something they're not i'm 100 percent sure the guy threatening me with a tech nine is not a genuine gangster i'm 100 percent <laughs> sure a genuine gangster doesn't go on yeah. twitter and type See, out. That, I know. think that goes that goes in more than one direction. It goes more than hey, I want to pretend to be this badass on the internet, because that's like, it, because on the internet you can also just be the victim if you want it to be yeah. right. And so many people want to be the victim. So that's why I asked about the death threat. Like, is someone like you ever threatened? It pisses me off so much when I see people talking about that they whine about getting harassment yeah. and death threats. And how many people do you know who ever got a death threat on the internet who actually died? Yeah, none. <laughs> exactly. How many people are fucking there? There's nobody. Like, what? Oh, they told you they were gonna kill you. Uh, then what? Yeah, exactly. You're still here. Obviously, it wasn't much of a threat then. It's true. It's true. There's a guy I recommend everyone follow. His name's Imam Tahidi. I think is how you say. It. I don't even know. I who like he him. Is. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, he's he he gets some genuine threats. Like outside his house, they put dead shit, pigs and shit, like crazy shit. He gets Jesus. real threats. That's a threat. But a tweet, come on, man. If you're gonna start taking Twitter serious, you're gonna have a really hard existence on Twitter. You need to just fuck off and do something else that bothers you that much. I think it's it's crazy to go down down that road, you know. And now the police are trying to police the internet and arrest anyone with bad think and all this bullshit. It's just it's just it really oh, is yeah. crazy. Oh, you know, I'm it's moving to. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, uh, I was just gonna, I? I was just gonna say it's getting like pretty bad these days. I, I'm sure I'm sure you've played RuneScape, Mister Tate. Uh, My so brother used to. Yeah. Oh, well, that's more than I expected. <laughs> Hats off to your brother. Yeah. Well, there was a, a recently a RuneScape player who went to jail for six years for making an, an edgy joke on on the game, and he he recently just got released in six I, years. Six years because he made what like. What did he do? He made an edgy school shooting joke, and there is a little bit more to the story. He had some like ex-girlfriends who who testified against him for some reason, 
And there's some gray area there, but ultimately it boiled down to this guy made a, a an edgy joke and he went to jail for six years for it. And I think things like that don't really Jesus Christ. don't really paint a good future for what people expect them to be. Because when you first hear it, it's like we're gonna take bad people off off of you know the streets before it even happens. Like some minority minority report shit, but that happens before Charlie. Remember, in League of Legends, there yeah. was also a guy who made a joke about the school shooting, and they also took him in. Yeah, he he got he got out with only a few months in jail though. But they really threw the book at uh at that guy. And it's just, just, I, say, sorry, go on. I was just gonna say I don't think people realize just what kind of precedent that sets for the future. I think I think the Western world is fucked. I don't want to be like a pessimist, but I genuinely think it is. And I think in 50 to 60 years, everyone's going to be trying to live where I currently live, which is Eastern Europe, because Eastern Europe has its shit straight. Like Eastern Europe is the perfect mix of old school communism ideals and Western, you know, democracy. And stuff. So I live in Romania. When I say I live in Romania, people go, what the fuck? Romania? What? Why? Like they think it's like Africa or some shit. Like there's a Lambo garage down the road. There's full of clubs. It's like it's, it's as westernized and as beautiful as any other city. It's got all the shit you want: doctors, dentists, whatever. But like, if uh, like all the crazy shit that can happen in the West, in the West, the way all this shit's going, and in, in here in the East, they're just like, oh fuck off, we don't care. And it's and and obviously, if you murder someone, you're in trouble. But all these stupid little crimes, all this dumb shit, none of that exists here, and it's so much better. Like when I said depression wasn't real. And like I have to say, I encourage you to Google that. You'll see how fucking big of a shitstorm it caused. Um, everyone, my I, I commentate for RXF, which is an MMA organization here. And RXF got over a thousand emails from randoms with my tweets saying that I'm bad for the brand and I'm promoting a dangerous stereotype and they need to fire me with immediate effect and I'm going to destroy their brand image and all this shit. If that was an English or Western company, I might have got fired. Oh, you absolutely would have. You're yeah. at, you are completely yeah. right. Yeah. And, and when I went into the work, the Romanian guy just goes, "England is full of fucking babies." Like we, <laughs> we just laughed. At, we just laughed at the English people and carried on. Like like that was it. You know. <laughs> like over here, no one gives a shit. Like say what you want, do what you want, don't kill anyone. It's fine. And that's why that's it's just what, so much better to be here. That's why I envy you so much. <laughs> just, God, just, that amount Bullet of proof. freedom. It's it's something else. I. I usually I'm in Turkey, but I I'm in Germany right now, and I got a lot of you know private messages saying, "Hey Kai, you know I'm glad for you. You're finally out of Turkey. It must be nice not to be under you know state censorship anymore. You can actually say whatever you want without you know having your family jailed." Yeah, and then yeah, I yeah. sent him a screenshot of my Twitter where you know half of my timeline is now withheld because I'm in Germany, and in Germany Nazi imagery is forbidden. And like I said, I follow some of them. It's like. Like, what the fuck, motherfucker? You're, like, making opinions illegal? Yeah, I know, man. I cannot even view this person's profile page without, like, a VPN or some sort of a proxy because they think, what, I'm a baby? I'm yeah, a, I know. I'm a, this is ridiculous. Not even the Turks do this shit. What is wrong with you? You're supposed to be, like, the Western world. You're supposed to be the beacon of freedom and shit. And Absolutely. I cannot read a tweet? Yeah, it's it's the absolute opposite, man. Here in Eastern Europe, as long as you 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 know you don't do anything too crazy, they really don't give a shit. And and it's weird because the culture itself, like, because Romania has one fifth of the crime of England. So once again, when I say Romania, they think it's dangerous. It's not dangerous here. Like, if you like, I know the mob bosses here, and the last thing they're gonna do is rob you or shoot. <laughs> oh God, <that's, laughs> I wish it I sounds could like say you that. are the Working danger. Your way up, huh? God, that'd be cool. <laughs> they're not interested in that shit. You know, they they've got legitimate businesses, most of them. And, you know, the idea of mafia and mob, like we understand it in the West, is completely different over here. Over here, it's just a dude with some influence, you know. So I know a guy who, I won't say the town, but he dishes out the alcohol licenses for this particular town. If you want to open a club in his town, he owns a percentage of your club. Otherwise, it takes six years to get the license. That's just how it works over here, you know. So he's seen as a mobster, but he really isn't. It's just that's how he does his business, you know. So, like, over here, like, the idea of crime and gangs and all that shit, it's a completely different atmosphere over here. And it's genuinely a safe place to be. Like, girls walk alone at night. Like, all the shit you never see in the West happen here. And also, they have none of the immigration problems or anything. All besides me, I've rolled up this yank. But besides that, you know, it's, it's – not that I'm anti-immigration anyway, but it's just, just a really weird culture to be, to be living in right now. And it's, it's kind of cool that I can do whatever I want, say whatever I want. No one gives a fuck. You can just – do whatever you like. It's really strange. Speed, whatever, anything. It's weird. 
God, I wish I could uh, sell. Yeah, I wish I could utter <laughs> that statement. Yeah, I know the mob bosses. I mean, I know what they like. They're yeah. Pokemon they're cool over guys. Digimon. Yeah, they're uh, pretty we're, nice. We're going to the club later this week. You know, <laughs> I'll see you there. <laughs> God, that would be so fucking cool. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So Romania is a cool place. So I would, if you're ever thinking of somewhere to to visit, I recommend Bucharest. I guarantee you'll have a lot of fun. You'll have fun. Yeah, I'll be fun of, yeah. I'll take you guys out. <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck! Ooh. Yes, great I'm contact coming. achieved. <laughs> I'm getting on a plane right now. <laughs> can you can you uh, have three Lambos lined up? Can you tweet out your exact location and wait there for two hours? Can you have can you have ten women lined up? <laughs> uh, the, the women are probably easier than the Lambos because I only have one Lambo because I'm a peasant. I apologize. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, you, I'm you sorry. What? Peasant. You, what? Oh Jesus! <laughs> get off of our podcast! Come on. Who is this nobody Tate. that you got on here? Yeah, I'm sorry. What guys, I'm sorry. I didn't know he had only one expensive sports car when I asked God, him. God, you well, no, 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 no. I have one Lambo. I do have an Aston Martin, too. So I do have oh, oh, thank you. Oh, okay. yeah, welcome back. <laughs> Mis- we're, we're, Mr. We're Tate. Back. Can I call you Mr. Tate? I'm sorry about that. Misunderstanding. You can call him Mr. T. <laughs> you know, that's another thing I get, actually. I get on Twitter maybe a hundred times a day is, you think you're so special with your rented cars. And I, yeah. I, like I've had the, I've, and I've, I've done the math. I've had the, I've had the Lambo 11 months and it was a quarter of a million dollars. It was a lot of money. But then I look at the price of renting one across 11 months and that's like nearly $400,000. So maybe I'd be richer if I rented them. They try and pretend I'm rich. I rent them for like a picture because I'm, I'm broke, even though I've had it consistently every day for 11 months. But I think that's one of the most moronic statements I get. Like, you, you constantly, like I rent it like that. Like that's not an achievement somehow. It would cost basically double. I might put an invoice up for something and saying, look, it'd be cheaper. But you can't win all against these trolls, There's, but it's yeah. just one of the things they throw at me. You'll never win that. But, like, the, I understand where they're coming from because a lot of rap artists and stuff, especially YouTubers, they rent cars to appeal to their younger fans. But I think there needs to be this level of common sense. You're a, a three-time ISKA kickboxing world champion. You You probably have the money to actually buy something like that. Yeah, and then it's, it's it's not like it's a different color every time. It's the same car, same number plate. Like every day, it's on my Insta story. <laughs> you should do that though. Just uh, just hop on Twitter and every day post like a different colored Lambo. See if people catch on or what they say about it. Just me, and my Lambo, day seven. Hanging yeah, out. Yeah. After a while, stop caring. Yeah, different car, just Ferrari, and then an Aston Martin, and then eventually like a Honda Civic. <laughs> Chilling with the Lambo. Yeah, I should do. After a while, just stop using cars like a blender. A fucking, a fucking toaster. toaster. <laughs> Brand new Lambo. <laughs> yeah, I should do it. I, I did that with girls for a while. <laughs> did you call her the same name? <laughs> <laughs> me, me and Kathy hanging out. <laughs> I should I should number them. Me and number them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'll do it. That'll get the feminist roll up. That, that's, that's your ticket. There it is. <laughs> You God, know what it is. You know life. what it is, though. I I know I know the reason I upset everyone so much is because I personify everything they hate. I personify toxic toxic masculinity. Mo- motherfucker, personify- you personify everything I want to be. Like everything everyone wants to be. Even the people who hate you. Pr- I promise you this much. Even the like beta male feminists. You know the the white knight cunts. Even they want to be you. You know this, right? <laughs> part, part this of the is puppy, so- yeah, they must see the girls and at least be like, no, nah, no, nah, not part of them, all of them. No man, man, you cannot go about uh, against your biology, man. Well, like, when they see a successful man with like you know buff, strong, and he has a Lambo and he has a bitch on it, like everyone wants to be that guy. Who doesn't? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. just like you said, like who doesn't want to be that Sims? You know? Yeah. Come on. It's weird, you know, like, like because obviously I, I grew up with no money, whatever, whatever, and I'm not that rich now. I, I keep saying that because I was Donald Trump Jr. I know what rich is, but still, um, <laughs> like, it's weird though. For a long, long time, I thought about like even if I even if fighting didn't bring me the money because fighting brought me money, and then I invested in some other things. I bought a whole ton of bitcoins in 2013. Oh, you are oh, one of the smartest human beings oh, we've ever met. You make me so sad with that. I we Andrew and I just missed that train. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We still got in it though. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're so uh, yeah, you'll still you'll still do okay. I believe you'll still do fine. But um, yeah. So I, I've been thinking about this for a long time, and even if I didn't fight and make money whatever i say this to all the people who say to me like oh yeah but you found fighting and it's so hard out here if you really want it you can find a way to to pull it off if you want it and you're clever enough and you're patient enough you'll find a way to pull it off 
And I remember when I was like in college and a Ferrari would drive past and everyone would be like, oh, cool, a Ferrari. And for me, that would ruin my fucking day. Like legit, <laughs> legit it would ruin my day. And they'd be like, why are you in a bad mood? I'm like, because that dude has a quarter of a million for a car and I'm on the bus. Like, don't you see there's some, something we're missing here? Like everyone else was just nonchalant about it. But for me, it was like, no, I need to fix this issue. So for, <laughs> for so long, it was at the forefront of my mind. And if you think that way, then you'll achieve it. It doesn't matter if, if food or money or anything's at the forefront of your mind constantly. You're going to end up finding some one way or another. So I've always thought about it that way. And I didn't ever want to be mega rich, but I wanted to be able to have some of the things I wanted. And now I have them. And I, I believe that in the Western world, if you're clever enough and you're patient enough, it does take time. There's no quick fix. But eventually you'll get there. That's what I believe. Anyway, uh, we'll I do recommend I did watch your video on depression i do recommend people should watch the video but without prejudging it i mean it, it's a baity title you know depression isn't real when you first kaya it. you're already fucked You've just been it's the internet you can't have anything without prejudice yeah but you know it, it's the sort of thing where you're conditioned to think oh no you're not allowed to say that you're not allowed to say that depression isn't real it's a medical condition how dare you You must be so ignorant blah, 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 blah. but that's not really what you go into i mean i watched the video and it's it's like what 30 minutes look mm -hmm. up Depression isn't real with Andrew Tate. It's basically 30 minutes of you going, listen, your life is in your hands. Life may throw obstacles at you, but you shouldn't use this as an excuse. At the end of the day, you are, you know, it, it all depends on you. You have the power. And I always thought that was the most empowering, encouraging message that anyone could give you. You know, the, uh, I don't know if you know him, Ben Shapiro. He says yep. something similar. He always says, you know, there, there's nobody who cares enough about you to sabotage you. Nobody yeah. gives that much of a shit about you. Like, your life is in your hands. If you really want to succeed, you can. And I always thought that was a good message. So even if I recommend to our viewers, even if you disagree with Andrew right now, Tate, <laughs> our guest Andrew, you should look up the video. It's not bad at all. But, you know, like, like our Andrew said, on the internet, it's difficult to even have that opinion without prejudice because someone can just look at the title and go, oh, so this guy's making fun of people with depression. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. And and then and, and then they start going. You don't believe in mental illness. I, like, I never said that. Don't put me in a room with a schizophrenic. I believe in mental illness. I never <clears> said that. You know. So they start saying. I said other things I didn't say. My idea on depression is that depression, in many many cases, is situational. And when I say that, because people talk about depression like it's this big monster from the outside that strikes your life out of nowhere and you catch it like the common cold, and it doesn't matter how brilliant your life is, all of a sudden you're now cripplingly depressed, and that's bullshit. Depression is situational in most cases. If you're depressed with your life, you're probably unhappy with certain things about your life. So people talk about depression like depression creates a bad life, whereas I think a bad life creates depression. I think it's the other way around. And proof for this is jail. If, if humans didn't get depressed situationally, <laughs> why do people avoid jail? You get, you get a bed, you get food. Like, wh why don't you want to go? You don't want to go because you'd be pissed off and depressed. Like, because, no, you're not happy with your situation. <laughs> you know? Like, there's, there's the proof for it. So when I, when I, I feel see... Like Sorry. I just I feel like jail was this life changing epiphany moment for you where you learned all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. So uh, reading that book. <laughs> but when, when so this is the proof for me. So when I see a guy and he says, Oh, I'm I'm fat and I have no girlfriend and I have no money and my life's shit because I'm depressed, I say, No, you're depressed because of those things. It's the other way around. Go to the gym. You know, try and, you know, you don't even got to make money. Try, start thinking about money. Start trying to look at investing in some things. You make a little bit of money. You still get, you know, a, a buzz from it. Start approaching things in a positive way. Change your life positively. You won't be depressed anymore. So people d d have this whole this idea of depression, like you're saying, that it's this big, incurable, unfightable monster that strikes out of nowhere. It's bullshit. You, if you have a life you're happy with, you're going to be happy. If you have a life you're unhappy with, you're going to be unhappy. And that's not a disease. That's personal choices you've made in the life you've created. And only you can change your life. I'm not saying it's easy to change, but no one else is going to kick your door down and say, that's it. I'm going to give you a new life. Like, that's not going to happen. So you have to do it yourself. You have to fucking stay a depressed loser and tweet at me all day. I don't, I don't give a fuck either way, really. <laughs> but that's the reality of the situation for most people. Obviously, there's 1% of people that have whatever, whatever, but that's my view on it. Yeah, I agree with most of it. Yeah, so, right. but, but yeah, it's a trigger. Like you said, it's a triggering, it's a triggering, uh, Depression isn't real and people instantly start having a breakdown. I'm depressed. I have PTSD and anxiety and depression and an eating disorder. How dare you say this? I'm just like, oh, fuck off. Get off Twitter. That's the thing, though. You're, you can't have an opinion on 
things like this on victimization without people immediately assuming you're diminishing them as people. Like, I, I watched the video, I assume that if I were to put you next to a woman, say, who has depression, right, she's diagnosed with depression, she's like, I don't know, crying or she's despondent and she's really depressed. I don't feel like you would make fun of her. I don't feel Absolutely like you'd not. poke fun of her. I don't feel like you'd just, you know, mock her for it. I feel like you'd be compassionate. I think you would still believe the things you believe and try to explain it to her without trying to hurt her on all, all that stuff. Yeah. And I, I, unfortunately, that's not how the internet is. The internet would assume that you would like slap her because you're a misogynist, evil pig who yeah. doesn't think depression is real. Maybe she just needs to get the dick to yeah. cap you or something like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's true. Absolutely. You're right. And, and you know, I, I have that real villainous image, but that's absolutely not the case. And I mean, I've, especially in the fighting world, like depression's a thing and you, you it's, I don't know, maybe it's from getting punched. A lot of dudes end up depressed or whatever, whatever, but I've never been there, but I've just, yeah, I think depression, like you look at Frank Bruno and, a, and Tyson and loads of retired fighters. I think fighting is an interesting sport because you sense your mortality more than a, than a normal the normal day-to-day life. Like, I don't know how, how old you guys are, but I know at the age of 30, I'm not as strong as I was when I was 24. Most 24 to 30 year olds don't feel that you don't notice it Whereas I know like a fighter knows, you know, you know, you heal slower, you know, because you're, you're performing at such a level and it's such a tangible level where you're getting hurt or you're trying to be as quick as possible. So you literally sense yourself die. And I think a lot of fighters, especially the ones who are in the real spotlight and then the limelight drops off and they lose a few fights and the young guys are better than them now. And lots of things add up and depression becomes a thing. But so it's never been in that situation. I said, look, okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. You're depressed. Okay. I've listened to all your excuses for an hour. Now you're going to go start smiling and be happy. You're going to carry on being a miserable bastard. Like, what the fuck do you want to do about it? You know, you, you still have some essence of self-control to, to, to completely relinquish self-control and say, I can't help this 1%, you know, I think is the wrong attitude towards anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's a car crash. It doesn't matter if it's anything. You have to keep your hands on the wheel, at least try and turn the wheel. Like, where, where the fuck do you just take your hands off the wheel and say, fuck it? I have no control over this. Like, that's, that's, that's the real dangerous mindset. So when I was saying this, people said, Tate, you're dangerous. You're, pr- you're propagating a dangerous mindset. I said, no, it's dangerous to tell these people that the only thing that they can do to help themselves is take a whole bunch of mind-altering drugs. That's dangerous. I'm saying at least try and have an influence over your own life. What's dangerous about that? I don't know. It's crazy. I agree. Well, be- uh, one more thing, because I know you're probably having to go here pretty soon. You brought up Bitcoin, and now I have not I- – I haven't been able to stop sailing at full mast. I have been – Super into cryptos for like the last how long, Andrew? Like five, five months, five months or so. A little less than that, but yeah, probably around yeah, so, that. Somewhere in that ballpark. Where the fuck did you hear about Bitcoin in 2013 to get on that fucking cash cow? Romania. <laughs> <laughs> all, of, all of Romania knew about it. I knew it. Romania, Romania for Romania is a really interesting, really interesting situation because it's the poorest country in Europe. But then Bucharest itself has a higher GDP per capita than Berlin. So like all of the money is focused in, in, the, in the center, the, the capital. Like if you go to the little villages, they have nothing. But the capital is a very, very rich place. It's full of Ferraris and Lambos and all this kind of crazy shit. But also they've got the fastest internet in Europe. So they've always been really into online businesses and things online because it's so hard to make money inside of the country. They're desperate to try and make money. Not desperate, but they understand that they can make a lot more money digitally and then if they bring it back into the Romanian sphere, they become very rich individuals very quickly. And that's why here you have loads of like webcam studios and stuff. It's not just because there's pretty girls here. It's because they have the fastest internet in the world. They've got pretty girls who have no money. They've got this – all these things add up. <laughs> you know. And all of a sudden you can drive past some of these webcam studios and they've got like 150 rooms, like huge buildings. There's 150 naked hot chicks talking to some dude making money per minute. Like you can see it and then there's like a Rolls Park out front. I just, so people, I, I, I like how pretty women are part of an, uh, part of the equation with everything. Well, they are, that you you know? are. <laughs> part, of the equation, <laughs> part of the equation. Yeah, but I mean, there's pretty girls in every country, but here they're pretty and they're broke, so you know, it adds up. So, <laughs> <laughs> but like, so they've always been good with online businesses. There's lots of like, I don't know much about coding and that kind of thing, but there's loads of programmers here, loads of all that kind of thing here, because they've always been trying to make money outside of Romania itself, and that's why when I was here, someone said to me about Bitcoin. And I, I didn't – I'm not going to sit and pretend I understand it because I understand it enough. I understand you mine for Bitcoins and they're rare and whatever. They get harder to find, but I understand that. But this dude who I'd invested in some other stuff, he's like, look, this is going to be big. I was like, man, is it? What? Coins? What? 
but I, th- I threw some money at it. I trusted him, and uh, to this day, he doesn't shut up about it. But so, you know, <laughs> Oh, so yeah. that, I was kind of I was kind of a bit lucky with it from there, but these the, the Romanians in whole anything online they're 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 involved in and like webcam is a, it's, it's another thing that's massive here. It really is. You would not believe how big an industry that is, and they're everywhere. All these pretty women walking along with bags worth ten grand a piece, and they got it from talking to some dude in America. It's really it's crazy. It's crazy world. I, 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 had I had no, no idea, idea about, about any of that. that. Yeah, like yeah. if you like, yeah, like I'll 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 propagate it now. If you go to liveyasmin.com and you just go and you look, that's a whole ton of <laughs> that's a whole ton of Romanian women sitting in webcam studios just just charging per minute. So, and it's a ama- it's another thing that's I find it super interesting because I know some guys who run these businesses. It's a massive, from a psychological perspective, it's really super interesting that all of their clients are from the West, and that's not because the West is richer. It's because the West is a unique society where a man can still have a high amount of disposable income. But if he's boring and he's fat and he's not fun, he's not interesting, he can still be lonely. Whereas that doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. Only in the West can you actually be rich. But if you're boring – like let's be honest. If, if, if you go talk to a girl, it doesn't matter if you have a Gucci t-shirt on or whatever. If you're boring, she doesn't want to talk to you. She, girls don't give a fuck about money that much besides actual straight prostitutes charging you per hour. Like if you can have a Rolex on, but if you're a boring cunt, they ain't gonna talk to you. They're like, oh, okay, he's got Rolex, but he's a dickhead, so bye. So you know, a lot of these guys have high disposable income, but they don't have the other assets which are required to be successful with women, and they end up falling in love with this girl online who really cares about them and all this shit. It's really, it's really interesting from a psychological perspective how it all works out. It's, it's crazy, but yeah, it's a big, it's a big, big thing. I always found that really interesting too on on Twitch. It's not just a Romanian webcam deep web stuff. On Twitch, they have the same the same phenomenon. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I was just about to say, Charlie, in the West, they just go on Twitch. Yeah, 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 yeah for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, and they're sitting there and like, oh, I love you. You're so special. I've only met a girl like you in the real world. Da, da, da. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know how Twitch monetizes. I don't know. Is it donations or is it? Yeah, I don't know uh, how it works. yeah. It's the same as live yes. Yeah, exactly okay, yeah. the same thing. Yeah. It's cam whoring if you're yeah. a woman. Yeah, yeah. Well, on the IRL section, yeah, that's oh, kind yeah. of what it's devolved into. Almost the, everything you see on there is. I mean, just, we we mentioned this offhand. My favorite quote when they put introduced IRL to Twitch was one of the top streamers said, "I finally don't have to pretend I like video games." <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's it's exactly so it's the same thing, and it goes to show that only in the Western world where you have this phenomenon, where because look, I've seen Romanian men who are ugly as fuck, but if they manage to achieve a, a degree of financial success, they're never going to be lonely, never. And that's not just because women only want money, but because it's just a different atmosphere, and you know, it's just the way it works. You don't find rich, lonely dudes in this part of the world, whereas. In the West, they must still exist. Or or on top of that, you get a whole bunch of men in the West who are married to some wife who doesn't fuck them, and they don't want to divorce her because she's going to take the house, so he just waits for her to go to sleep, and then he goes on the internet late at night. You get that shit as well, which doesn't exist here. <laughs> Rest in peace, Brendan Fraser. You know, you know like, <laughs> over here, I'm, I'm very sure you could go to a Romanian court and say, I'm divorcing my wife. She doesn't get a penny. She didn't suck my dick when I told her to. Like, they'd probably be like, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> what kind of Mad Max world is it over there? <laughs> Do you, do you two fight it out in blood court? Like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah different, but yeah, I think I think it's from a psychological perspective. What I've seen it, I think it's a super interesting industry. It says a lot about you know the psychologies of men and women and stuff. It's interesting. Yeah, Olga Steelwool wasn't awesome. sucking my dick. I, I get the and house. Bitcoin is Bitcoin is sort of a spite currency. That, that it really got rolling out of spite. Whenever I see somebody getting rich out of Bitcoin, it's always something like, yeah, you know, uh, like, look, take uh, Julian Assange, right? You yep. guys know him. Yep. And the other day he tweeted something like, uh, you know, all the banks, they banned him and his organization basically from their system, like yep. Visa, MasterCard and all that shit. Yep. So all they had to do, all they could do at that point a couple of years ago was invest in Bitcoin to stay yeah. afloat. And he tweeted, you know, thank God you assholes banned us because yeah, now yeah, I have yeah. a 50,000% return of investment. Yeah, uh, Bitcoin is skyrocketing now. And you look at other, uh, you know, like Gab. I don't know if you've ha- heard about Gab's. It's the alternative to Twitter now. That's nope. what they're branding themselves as. And they have their ICO meaning they have their own currency yeah. sales and shit, I guess, and, and all that. I, Bitcoin has become this tool of the, the left want to call it, you know, the, the, the Nazis. Like, yeah. they don't like it. They're not happy. They're not happy campers at all. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, control it. the only problem with a 50,000% return is that you're stuck in a fucking embassy. So, 
how many coffees can you order? How many lattes does the fucking, you know, canteen provide? I don't know. But, um, yeah, no, completely. I mean, I didn't invest tons and tons in it. It's not the only source of my money, but I, I, it's, it's, for me, it's really just cool. Like, I spent that much and I have that much. To me, it's just cool from that perspective, you know. Uh, it is uh, kind of uh, cool. I'll openly say it. I've never been more envious of your situation solely because of your sponsors. Because see, from our spec, uh, perspective, we didn't have any ads on in this yeah. episode, so that's why we didn't do any ad reads. But even when you get like the name wrong slightly, they'll demonetize yeah. us and not yeah. pay us. Yeah, and yeah, to yeah. see you be on Twitter like, yeah, whatever, go tell my sponsors, faggots. <laughs> you don't know just how jealous we are. Yeah. We can yeah, never know. say something like that. We, we cannot even get their goddamn names wrong by a letter. Otherwise, we're going to get uh, yeah, in trouble. trouble. Yeah, you need a uh, Romanian sponsor. They, they don't get They're just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> find us some. I'll happily, I'll happily promote your webcam whores. <laughs> if you can just find us some. Go for visit us. Lucy. She really loves you. Yeah, for fuck's sake, I'll, I'll walk around and be your ref for like 10000 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just a, yeah, it's just a different world out here. Like they they don't understand the whole liberal bullshit. Like Trump's a hero out here, and they like they don't understand. When I explain to them how the left think, they're like, they look at me like he's joking, or like they really don't believe people exist that way because they don't exist here at all. It was funny. They had a gay pride march in in Bucharest, and obviously, you know, it's a different kind of atmosphere towards it. And it was the same day as London Gay Pride, and uh, I drove past it, and I swear it was like literally, and this is not an exaggeration eight people maybe like eight and they had like two policemen who were super reluctant to be there like the policemen were deliberately with them <laughs> and gay like we just have to be here and they're like these eight people doing like the gay pride march da, da, da. i'm not against gays at all I don't, I don't give a fuck i'm just saying it's like a different atmosphere like in the west where we celebrate so much bumming a dude like it's the best thing in the world and over here it's like the few <laughs> the few the few who turn up are just like looking around like shit we're gonna get killed like it's just this is weird it's just, just different this is a different place uh, it is palpable envy at this point. Well, come visit, man. Come visit. You're, you're more than welcome to. You'll, you'll like it. Well, apparently you're close enough. It's like a one hour difference. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. The flight, the flight is is nothing, and it's cheap as well. From Germany, it's very cheap. It's, uh, 60, 70 euro or something. All right, we've been going for like an hour and a half almost, and I know you definitely had something coming up in like an hour. Kaya said, so we can go ahead and wind this down. Is there anything you want to plug, Mister Tate? Uh. You know, nothing really. I think anyone who listens to this, if, if I've upset you, I absolutely encourage you to – what you need to do is is go on Twitter and you need to pre-plan because you can't just tweet me once. I know you like to do threads. So you need to tag me in this thread about why I'm a horrible piece of shit and make it nice and long and I won't read it <laughs> and I won't care. So I encourage you to go through that and then, um, you know, see if it see if it changes my outlook. Good that, luck. That, that if, anyone, if, anyone, if, if anyone's words are, are, are potent enough to change the way I approach the world, then you deserve the results you get. But I don't think it's going to turn out in your favor. So I, that's, That was less of a plug and just more of a selling a tickets challenge. to the next challenge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you're my... I gotta tell, I don't have the opportunity to tell Dick, but you're my second favorite guest. But only second, because we had Dick on, who's my favorite, and He's my favorite because he fucked his partner's, like his business partner's ex-girlfriend. And he got so buttered over it. That's why he's still my favorite. But <laughs> God, did, were you fun. Yeah, Thanks, guys. Is, really appreciate you coming yeah, on. Thank you very much. Definitely. Awesome. All right. Speak soon. Yeah, yeah. Take it easy, man. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>